privilege to come around again as we study the word of God together um, as we settle let's quickly pray together father we thank you for how you have been helping us thank you for the understanding of the word of God um, thank you for not hiding your word from us thank you for your spirit thank you because you have revealed to us that the only way that you can help us is by sending your word to us and we thank you that you have not failed in doing that to us um, every time thank you again this evening that your word will come to us the word that will guide us the word that will draw us closer to you um, more than ever before Lord we are pleading with you that you will not allow anything to hinder your word this evening in our lives in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ everyone listening we pray that your spirit will create space Lord for your word not only that for understanding oh God this evening in the name of Jesus bless us at the end oh God may we glorify your name in the name of Jesus we pray amen you are very much welcome to Bible study again today we are trusting the Lord that the Lord will bless us uh, together today in the name of Jesus quickly let's uh, begin our study we have been looking at the story that says uh, experiencing God and we have been emphasizing that that is what we actually need today that if men of old did not experience God we will not have uh, their histories to read today we will not have the Bible that we have in our hands today there will not be any history uh, for us to read um, actually the Bible in our hand is the history of God is story um, is story that mean the history of God the history of how God walk, walked in the midst of his people and until we come to this our generation that's the Bible so we wouldn't have had Bible if not that some people in the past have actually experienced God in their lives in their midst and if we cast our minds back we see that uh, in that in the story in the history that we have in our hands we have seen severally where God himself has assured us that we also can experience him just like our fathers have done so and um, God is is ready to fulfill his promise uh, but when we notice our generation today it looks as if this experience is uh, actually fading off is fading away like what's happening to us why can't we experience God the way we have we have seen it in the Word of God the way it happened to our fathers and God has also, uh, also assured us that it can happen is the same yesterday today and forever 
So if God has not changed, if his word is forever settled in heaven, if the word has not changed, then I think we are the ones that have problems or we do not uh, understand the secret that the men of old understood that made them to have encounter or have experience uh, with God. So we are trust that's we are trusting God that these studies will guide us, will help us to find out what are those things that we do not know, what are those things that hinder us today from having this experience, daily experience with our God. And so that's the reason why we are uh, we're moved. This concern made us uh, to begin to look at the word of God. Is it possible? And God is saying, it's possible if you also can do what those people have done. So we have started and we believe that God has been speaking to us gradually and we have seen some uh, dimensions of encountering God from the Word of God. Hearing Him, seeing Him, and finding Him. Those were the three things that the Scripture revealed to us that the people that work with God those were the, those were what happened to them that made them to experience God. Those were the three things that we can refer to as experiencing God. Now when you have an experience of someone, you will have heard him. Not only that you will see the, the person, then you'll have been able to touch him. And so we are that those are the three dimensions of our studies and we have started the first dimension and that is where we are we are trusting God that in that first dimension of these studies uh, God we he will continue to lead us last week we uh, started the first leg which is hearing God that if we must experience God first and foremost we must learn how to hear him a man who claimed to have experience with God must have heard from him must have heard his word must have been able to uh, learn one or two things which others might have not learned from that same God so, last week we emphasized the importance of this study. Why this study is so important or why, why hearing God is so much important for us even today. And we said that it is the desire of God to have intimate relationship with us. God is still interested in intimacy even till today today that it seems as if everyone is on his own today that it seems as if everyone is busy the schedule of everyone is so tight that it looks as if hearing God you know is, is difficult that creating time, sitting down to listen to him, or hearing his voice wherever one is, looks difficult. But despite all that, despite whatever challenges around us today, the word of God has not changed. In fact, God has not changed his mind, his desire to have 
intimacy with us. God is still lunging. Even right from the time that Adam or that we sinned, that he has been looking for man. He has not changed his, his mind. He's still looking for man till tomorrow. Now, so, it's so important for us because this is the desire of God. And also, we need to understand that God speaks in more than one way. So, this study is very important. We will find out all this. So, those were the things that we emphasized um, last week. And we also need to see how how God speaks today. How does He speak today? You know, how does He speak today? We have been, we have seen the way He spoke uh, in those days, but how does He also speak to us today? So, and we prayed, and then today by the special grace of God. We want to quickly step a bit forward, uh, further, under this uh, study, Hearing God. We are going to begin uh, uh, from this point, we will proceed from the general to the particular. That means the, the general way of hearing God then as God will help us we will move to the specific or the particular uh, so today we are going to be looking at the Bible and the Gospel the Bible and the Gospel uh, how do we hear the Lord or hear God through the Bible and the Gospel. So that straight way should tell you and I that the first way, the first way, the first very, very important, please, the first way to hear God is through the Bible and the Gospel. The Bible and the Gospel. So we are concentrating on that day that hearing God through the Word that is the Word of God and the Gospel. Now we have noticed that God generally spoke in ancient time through prophets and in various ways using of symbols um, um, dreams visions and so on and so forth and but in these last days he spoke to us by his son that's what the Bible you know have said now when we are talking about the Word of God it should be understood in four ways Number one, the Word of God in person. We should understand the Word of God in person. The Bible says in John, if you read, let's read John, John 1 and verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, so the Word of God is should be understood in person. We should understood the person of the Word of God. In other words, the Word of God is also a person. It's a personality. Alright? Secondly, the Word of God should also be understood in power. Say the Word of God in power. So, if you want to, this word that we are talking about today can be understood in person, then it can be understood also in power. 
then look at what the Bible says. Let's read the Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. Look at what Paul said to the Thessalonians. He says, And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God which you had from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God which is at work in you who believe so in the word the word of God here is the gospel is the gospel so the word of God can be understood in person which is the person of Jesus and also in power that is the gospel Romans 1 Verse 16 says something. He said, you know, Paul said, He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Look at that. It is the power of God unto salvation. So, if we are understanding the word of God, we have to understand it in this direction also. The gospel. Now, thirdly, the word of God in print. The word of God in print. That is the Bible. The Bible. The Bible says in Second Corinthians, Second Timothy, rather, three verse sixteen. Second Timothy, three verse sixteen. You can read if you have your scripture Bible there. It says all scripture is God breathed and is used for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's the Bible. The Bible also, the Word of God in print. So, the Word of God can be in which form now? In person? In what? In power, which is what? The Gospel? Then also the one in our hand, which is the Bible in print. Look at that now. Look at what the Bible says about the Word of God in print. Second Peter 1, 20-21. can read quickly. It said, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. You can see the word of God in print in our hand is the inspiration of God. And see, it's, it's like God himself releasing himself, his breath on the people that wrote them down so the scripture in our hand also is the word of God then the word of God should be understood also by paraclete this is the Holy Spirit so these four ways of seeing the word of God we must really really understand them so the word of God in person. He revealed God revealed Jesus to us is the word. God is speaking to the word through Jesus. The word of God to the world is the person of Jesus. I take that again. The word of God. W O R D to the world W O R L D is the person of Jesus so you can see that God speaking to the word through the person so the word of God can be in person and also in gospel that is 
the messages of salvation good news about the kingdom of God so that is also the Word of God also the Word of God also the one we carry which is in print the one that has been documented by the holy men that were moved by the Spirit then the Word of God the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit also is the Word God communicate his mind to us through the Holy Spirit so now as we talk about the Word of God by the Holy Spirit now look at us in Acts of the Apostles let's read the Bible regards that Acts of the Apostles 8 29 we see how the Spirit released his Word to us today Acts 8 29 the Bible says the Spirit told Philip you can see the Spirit speaking the Word of God the Spirit told Philip go to that chariot and stay near it also in Acts 8, 16 verse 7 we see it says, when they came to the border of Mysia they tried to enter Bithynia but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to so the spirit can see the word through the spirit can understand the word of god through the spirit so the word of god also is is spirit now the divine strategy was that the second person of the godhead be known as the word now when we are talking about the second person of the Godhead, we are referring to the Son. The Godhead is the Father, Son and the Spirit. So the second person of the Godhead is the Son. And the divine strategy is that it should be known as the Word. Now the Greek word for the Word is logos which literally means faculty of communication or thought logos is the faculty you know of communication or thought and this means that hearing will be essential to knowing the song that you just need to hear you know you cannot know the song if you have not heard if you have not been communicated to you know if you have not been communicated to by you know maybe God or the word the spirit the gospel if you have not heard there is no way you can know the song now the son became flesh and lived among us that's what the bible says in john 1 verse 14. but it will only be accepted by hearing despite the fact that jesus christ came that the son came down to live with us we cannot we can't accept him except we had him except by hearing now if you look at the book of john john chapter 6 if you read 1 to 5 there you will not be able to to read you discover that those who saw jesus either believed or disbelieved whether or not they believed his work in other words, what makes people to make decision for Jesus is whether they have had his word or not. It's not because the Jesus Christ was so beautiful, they like him, his face like that. What made people to make decision for him is whether they have done what they have believed in his word. 
Now, let's quickly move forward. Now you discover that in John 6, 1 to 15 that we, we said there, many people believe for a while because of what they saw. Look at that. Because people saw miracles. They saw that Jesus Christ has performed the miracle, maybe uh, feeding people and so on and so forth. So they believed for a while. I want us to take note of this. But when you go to the same uh, that same chapter and when you go to verse 60 and you read further you discover that they left Jesus Christ because they eventually rejected what they had so you discover that what determined whether people will follow Jesus Christ or not is not what they saw I mean the miracles, the what have you, ble blessings, and so on. In this context, you know, these people believed Jesus Christ for you why because of the miracles. But these same people rejected him because of what they had. Now, so that means it is not what the miracle that you see that actually make you to stay with Jesus. But what you have heard, the word. Now that straight away tells us the major reason why people uh, abandon Jesus. Those people that have been in the, in, in, in the church for some time. You, do, you wonder. Uh, this person has been in church for a long time. What happened that he changed his mind? Now. He, he see that he has come because of what he wanted to receive or because of one miracle blessing or or promises or, or the other uh, not that he has actually had God or, uh, or has had Jesus the day the person really hear Jesus and he makes decision and that is the day we can say that the person has actually started following God or started following Jesus. It is the day a man, you know, hear Jesus, hear the word, and he makes decision whether to follow or not to follow that we say he has heard the word of God. So, it is hearing that actually uh, assists us in making decision to follow the Lord. Brother, have you heard God? Have you heard the word of God? Now, it does not matter the number of years that somebody has been in the church. No. You can see, these people have been following Jesus. But the same people, they rejected Jesus. Jesus because of what they had from the same Jesus you know there are some people it is the day they had the word that they don't like or the message that does not agree with the kind of life they live or they live it is that day they will say I'm not going to that church again no but the day they have been hearing sweet, sweet, sweet words. Oh, you're going to bless, be blessed. God is going to bless you. God is going to help you. You are going to make it. You are going to prosper. You are going to, you know, you will have everything. Oh, hallelujah. Did, now, the day they have been, they, they, all those time, days, they have been hearing all those sweet, 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 sweet side of the word of God. They are not offended. But it is the day they actually hear the other side of, you know, correction. Remember, the Bible says, all scripture is given, is God's breath. is given by the inspiration of God. For what? For teaching, for rebuking. Now listen, so the day these people hear the word that rebuke them, they change their mind, they say, uh-uh. 
you have been telling us good good things now today you are rebuking somebody no it's the, it's the word of god so you see that when people get offended when they hear the word it shows that they have not actually heard the lord the same people who were happy when they saw miracles were the same people that rejected jesus when he spoke to them so so when you make it is the decision the kind of decision that you make in the course of your following that will determine whether you have actually heard the word of god or not so we said that the sure way to know that you will not reject jesus is whether you have uh, accepted what you had or not that uh, the only way for some for us or for to know that someone has actually had the word of god is the kind of decision he makes after hearing that word he needs to make decision now when talking about the gospel the gospel is god's voice to us today apart from the bible the gospel is god's voice also to us today that is why paul said in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes from hearing from what from hearing faith comes from hearing there is no way somebody can make decision if he has not heard and you can see the reason why there are several people in the church today they are just there they have not decided whether to follow Jesus or not. There are several people. People of God, I tell you this evening, there are still several people in our churches today who have not made decision to follow the Lord. They are there. And I wonder what they are doing in the church. Well, I don't know. Several reasons. They are, they are there. But the question I'm asking you, if you are listening to me today, is that why are you in the church? Have you made decision to follow Jesus? If your being in the church is not because you have made decision to follow him, well, I don't know what you are doing in the church. I don't know what you are looking for, but maybe you are looking for something else. But because we need to the church of God is only for those who have made decision to follow Jesus through what they have heard. Have you heard the Lord through the gospel? Have you heard the gospel? Several people are in the church today not because they have heard the gospel. You see that they have come to collect some things. Not because they have had the gospel. So, they cannot make decision. They, they, they cannot base their faith on what they have had. Paul said, faith comes by from hearing. It is when we hear the Lord that we will be able to make decision for the Lord. And that's where our faith begins. God chose preaching as the instrument by which his good news is communicated. That's it. That's why you see the church emphasize uh, the church has to preach the word of God. We have to preach and we must give time to that. Preaching the word of God must be preached in the church everywhere. Because that is the instrument by which the good news is communicated. Preaching is the communication of good news, the gospel, and it must be done with 
all seriousness. And therefore, if one receives the gospel, it is because he or she had God. So brother, if you have received the gospel today, I want to tell you that you have had God. God has spoken to you. You see, there are several believers who say, ah, this, thing, this God that they say is speaking to... No. If you are a Christian, you have already had God. The only people that will say they have not had God speak, spoke to them is those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ. One way or the other, every believer, every born again child of God has had God. If, if you have not had God, there is no way you will be able to make decision to follow Him. The reason why you are able to make that decision to follow Jesus Christ was because you have had Him. So, I want to tell you that you and I listening today, if we have given our life to Jesus Christ, we have already had you know, God. God has spoken to us. So if you say God is not speaking to you, so I want to tell you today that no, you are not correct. As long as you are a child of God, you are a Christian, and you have witness in your heart that you have given your life to God, you have heard the voice of God. It was not by vision or a voice. You heard the word, and you believe it. As long as you had the word of God and you believe, and say, yes, I believe this gospel, I believe this word, then God has spoken to you, to you, you have heard. So we hear the word of God also through the gospel. You know, when we believe the gospel, it is the Holy Spirit that gripped us. He convict us of our sins, you know. Just like he say, he will, conv he will convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment. You know. So it is the same Holy Spirit that pointed every one of us to Christ. Who died on a cross. And that's, uh, we embrace his saving work. And that is why we can call ourselves Christians. So, if you are a Christian, and I say one, once again before we pray this evening, you have already heard God. And so, so that is the foundation. The foundational way in which we can hear God is through His Word and the Gospel. So, if you have not heard the Gospel and you find yourself in the church, sorry, you have not had God do. I don't know who brought you. The only thing that will bring us to the church and to God and will make us to stay is what? Is the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. That's what the Bible says. Any other thing, if it is not the gospel, the where the Salvation of the people is still is still uh, is still not sure because, as we see in the Word of God, a eh, the the power of God to salvation, the power that God uses to save people, is the gospel. So, if you are in the church, brother or sister, you are listening, and you have not genuinely had the gospel of Jesus or maybe somebody just brought you and said be coming to our church I invite you but you have not had the gospel about Jesus the savior that is the one that saves us and you have not been convicted of sin by the Holy Spirit and you are just jumping from one church to another where I don't know what you are doing in the church. You you need that. 
you God needs to speak to you through the gospel then when you have settled that you can be sure that you are following God you are following Jesus that's the foundation and he can now continue fellowship with you now before we close today so having heard the gospel so that you believed and obeyed then you are qualified to hear God speak further we can see that now that the foundation is that we hear the gospel so anybody that want to hear God further or want to enter into relationship with God that we are talking about want to have an encounter with God you want to be uh, you want to learn how to experience God regularly in your life the prerequisite the foundation is that you must have had the gospel the gospel of Jesus the savior of the world if you have not heard and believed the gospel there is no way you can hear God there is no way at all it's not possible for someone that has not heard the gospel and believe to hear God so you can see that several people in the church I say I can hearing this God that they are talking about no the first question is have you heard the gospel do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have you made decision to follow him now if you have made such decisions you have laid a good foundation then God can speak to you further you are qualified to hear God speak further so if that foundation has not been laid in your life brother the foundation of the world you have not believed the word of God you have not believed the gospel of Jesus the good news of salvation the good news that he came to save us from our sins if you have not settled with all of that no you can't hear God but if that has been sorted out all of us we are Christian we are child now we have had God Holy Spirit has come around has convicted us then we have made decision to follow Jesus then we have passed the first test we are qualified to hear God speak to us further so when we come to Jesus Christ like a divine network was set up in our mind and heart you know the day we believed and we believed the gospel like a divine network was set up in our mind there is a connection a network was set up then preparing us preparing our mind preparing our heart making our heart you know conducive for for us for fellowship for communication with God and so that means the potential is there from then on to hear God speak so what puts the potential in the heart of every man to hear God is what God speak is what hearing the word the gospel and accepting it now we should exercise caution that any communication that purports or that is pretends or seems to be from God will be verified or nullified by whether or not it coheres with scripture so as we begin to go further if this has been settled the only way that you can verify or nullify anything that you have heard from now is what is the scripture anything that does not correspond with the scripture is not the word of God because God will not say anything to you that is that is at variance with his word 
So if what you had contradicts the word of God in print, no matter how clear it was to you, you must have the humility and integrity to say that it was not truly God after all. Now, let me make comment here. Now, the, the God speak to us. We have said that he lays the foundation through the gospel, the word of God, the Bible that he has given to us. Now, God put his word in print as a confirmation, you know, as a testament for us to confirm any 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 voice or any word that we matter we may hear whether from him or from anybody god has give us the word of god in print to confirm anything we hear from anyone including him that even when it is god speaking to us we need to check that once it is verified in the word of God in print, they will know that this is God speaking. But the moment it does not correspond with the word of God in print, that's the Bible, then it has to be nullified. So, the word of God in print in our hand is very, very important because that is the weapon that we can use to verify or nullify anything that we hear from anywhere. My prayer is that the Lord will give us understanding. He will show us his word more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. So, uh, the word of God is the, the word of God, the imprint must reign supreme in our hearing God. When we move forward there, in our next study as we make more clarifications on this but I call your attention as we pray this evening to this fact that anyone that has not heard the gospel if you have not heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ you don't have potential to hear God if the word of God the gospel of Jesus, you have not accepted it. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you cannot hear God. God cannot speak to you. You can hear some voices, so you can hear where, well, but if it is God, the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible will not speak to someone that is not of God, that has not believed in the God of the Bible. You, you can never hear. So, if you want to begin this journey with us, the journey of encountering God, experiencing God, then you need to first and foremost check whether you have accepted the gospel not some parts of the gospel the old some gospel some people believe in the gospel of prosperity is good but they don't believe in the gospel of repentance they don't believe in the gospel of sanctification they don't believe in holiness but they believe that oh, everything should be fine. No. Everything, you it has to be wholesome. It has to be wholesome. It has to be together. You know. So, if you 
have not accepted the wholesome gospel, the Bible, as the only yardstick for your life, you cannot hear God. You will not be able to follow us in this journey. But if you have done that, or you want to do that, you just need to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Then the communication link that we are trusting God to teach us how to maintain will be open to you for the rest of your life. So I think we should pray at this point. Brother, the question is, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Let's check. It doesn't matter if you are in the church. But what we are saying is that we want to learn how to we can hear this God, encounter Him, experiencing Him daily in our lives. As we move forward in our next study, the Lord will help us. Stay tuned. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for how you have moved us gradually this evening. Thank you. Lord, our emphasis this evening is that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. We have to first and foremost believe the gospel. Believe the Son as the word of God. Believe that he is the word of God to our world. Then we need to also believe the communicated message about Jesus to the world. When this is sorted out in our hearts, the foundation for hearing, the communication link for further hearing for our daily living will be opened. Lord, please, this is our prayer today. Please do that. Even everyone, for us, for many of us who say I've been Christians, we have been in church, Lord, we just need to you just need to do something in our lives. Lord, let the gospel be imprinted. Even for some of us that have claimed to have had it. Please, Lord, may we hear you all over again. Let Jesus Christ come into our hearts and prepare our hearts. And prepare and make our hearts convenient, conducive for the voice of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your children, those who are making decisions for Jesus today, so that they can also uh, resolve the potential to hear God regularly for their lives. Please accept us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Till we meet, God bless you.